And welcome everybody, uh, Homeschool Connect Expo. Uh, we have our STEM fair going on uh, all of the month of May. Um, so uh, we are uh, coming to uh, to you live right now, Facebook, Facebook group, and YouTube. Uh, so if you're watching this um, and it shows live, you can jump on and uh, ask your questions uh, because I, I know you'll have some questions because this is one of the, the things that I get a lot um, um, of, of questions about um, of, of when you get to the, the science and some of the things that, that you might not know or feel comfortable teaching, what do you do then? Um, especially ones that are, are brand new to homeschooling um, and, and you know homeschooling has, has doubled. Plus, um, you know, the numbers are, are all over the board, depending on what it means to homeschool. But, uh, but today I have someone that uh, will help you. Um, and, and he has a, a company and what he does, uh, he dives right in to, to help you as a parent, uh, back you up uh, on this matter of science and all kinds of different other things that we'll uh, get, in, get him to, to talk about. Um, and, and just, uh, remember just anytime you, you have a, a comment, it comes right in and we'll ask, I'll ask and, and, uh, he'll answer, uh, anything, but, uh, go out to, to the, uh, STEM fair, uh, the links are below and then, uh, go out to his, uh, his exhibitor booth, take a look. He's got a ton of information, a ton of of articles and links out there and then go check out his website. So let's bring him on um, and right now. And, and Craig, the uh, thank you so much for being a part of, of uh, the STEM fair, the homeschool uh, connect expo. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your company? Hi, my name is Craig Risen, and my company is called learning center online. So sounds very simple, sounds very obvious, Learning Center Online. But I want to, uh, the, the title is actually Learning CTR Online. That's my name, Craig Thomas Risen. So I thought it was a really cute <laughs> crossover. Uh, I've been a teacher for, well, since the 19, uh, since 1980. I was actually a certified physics, chemistry, and uh, biology teacher. So I've been at this for over 40 years and just excited to be able to offer my own services now. I've always worked for someone else. I've, I've taught uh, 25 years in public school and I've been in New York State, in Ohio and in Michigan. I actually was a full time uh, Christian worker for a while. So it did move me around and then I would teach because that's something God has really uh, gifted me with and developed over the years. Uh, Case in point, I have a double master's degree. I have an administrative degree in education as well as a master's in biology and minored in both chemistry and physics. So I'm certified in all those areas. And uh, you know, what, what, I've, what I've really learned is that I wanna offer who I am to just a handful of students. I've taught in public school and online and in every case, I've always had 120 to 150 students, and that's great for income. Uh, you know, I've made good money as a teacher, and uh, but that's not what I'm about anymore. Uh, the Lord told me to continue to teach, and I just feel that uh, it's not about the money anymore. Actually, the money is for the parents to commit to being with me, because I, I'm going to teach three courses this coming year, physical science, chemistry, and physics. And Sam, am I on the right track here? Is it okay if I continue? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So uh, all three classes will be offered one time live a week. I use Zoom myself. So there'll be a video and I will meet directly with students. I only want five in each class, five or six. I don't want 15 kids. I mean, I'll take it if that's what I get. But I really only want five or six so I can pour who I am into them. And I'm much, much more than about the content. I don't just teach 
physical science. I don't just teach chemistry content. I don't just teach physics. And I have lots of experience. Uh, physics itself is my least experienced area, and I have 15 years. Okay. Uh, chemistry, 25. Physical science, pretty much the entire time I taught, 30 plus years. So I have all kinds of training. I, I have over 2,000 hours of professional development talking about what are the best practice strategies. And I've incorporated as many as I possibly can. I believe in accommodating students. Students learn differently. I learn differently. And one of the frustrations that I had all through is and I'm not saying it's anyone's fault because when you're in a public school or like I was I I was in a very good online private school. I really loved it. Uh, but it's still big business. It's still big. And what that means is eventually you're going to start getting one size fits all. And for instance, you've got to kind of teach to the book. So here I got all this expertise. Too bad. It doesn't fit the book. You need to teach section one, section two. But I know through experience, this concept goes better with this one over here than the progress the book gave you. And so I want to be able to offer that to my students. Learning is really about going one step beyond where you're at. And then you keep going and you keep going and you keep going. Learning is not about grades. I did real well in school. OK, I was an A student. Uh, yeah, I got some B's, but I have mostly A's. All three of my children, A students, it's not about the A. It's about the learning. So mm -hmm. I taught myself how to learn. I taught my kids how to learn, and they got A's <laughs> because they knew how to think critically. They knew how to even scaffold their own learning, which means to take one step at a time. You know, in, when I teach, kids laugh because I always tell them, you know what? When it comes to education, you should be kissing all the time. <laughs> of course, parents, first time they hear that, they're like, oh, boy, right. what's this guy? Keep it simple. But more than that, I'm a science teacher, so it's much more than keep it simple. It is keep in step because everything in science begins with the scientific process, which is a very step-by-step -step process. And you'll find that most sciences are the same way. And that includes music. That includes mm -hmm. uh, English. That includes mathematics. Now, maybe history, a little different because there's so much uh, interpretation involved. But the learning aspect is why I do this. And so I developed my a company called Learning Center Online. And it has a lot to offer. I offer those three courses which will be live. I also offer them self-paced. I'm building them so you can just purchase the course and you could do it on your own if you want to. You know, if you don't want me there, if you don't want that extra time uh, and you just want to pace yourself, I'm trying to, to do that as well. And I have the physical science and the chemistry done. Uh, I'm working on the physics now. I have uh, science demonstrations. Uh, in fact, let me let me show you. Can I show them my yeah, site? Yeah, that'd be great. Go to my site here. And, and start showing you some real stuff. And good. All right, this one. All right, there you go. Okay, there I am. So first, let's just walk through this, okay? First, what do I offer? There's a lot of things. I offer the live science classes. I offer self-paced class, which I just mentioned. I offer recitation classes. Now, what that means is if you, most of you, if you took college science, they would usually accompany the more rigorous courses with a recitation class. It's a review class, basically. It's There's no extra work involved, but it's, it's for review. And I found that to be very helpful as I've taught chemistry and physics. I, we add an extra class. I tutor. I have a whole series of study skills that I, use, how to study for a test, how to take a test, what kind of studying really supports learning, okay? I have created hundreds of science demonstrations, you know, especially when you're online, but and also when I taught live, I tried to do a demo a day with my students. I always wanted them to see something. I'm a visual learner myself, and so I've put a lot of these demonstrations on video, and 
and I've also done labs. Science labs are probably the hardest thing to deal with. There are tons of resources out there, but I've got to be honest with you. And and I because I was in public school and private, I've I've had so many resources to look through and I've never found a really good resource for science labs. I always made my own. Uh, you know, I tailor fit them to my students, to the content we were covering. And so I made a lot of labs that are generic and yet very uh, hands-on, very to the point, and uh, they're awesome. And so they, I have them all available. So I have give you an example here. I have uh, chemistry labs and I have a whole list of them here. If you look down through, so even for graphing, I have a little simple lab that people can do. And these labs, some of them are virtual, some of them are live, like matter, teach kids that uh, mass doesn't change when you go from the state of matter, like from solid to liquid. So they melt an ice cube. So they measure the ice cube and they measure the water when it's melted and they find out it doesn't change. So something that simple to something much more complicated like classifying matter. But you can see I have pages of labs and they're so helpful to the kids. They like doing these labs. I've used them for years. I keep developing more and more labs. And then let me go back here. I would say last, but not at all least, uh, I even have voice lessons available. And I, I'll brag about my son here. This is my son, John. He is a professional opera, Broadway, and crossover singer. And uh, I think you'll be able to hear this. Let me give you a taste. How's that coming out, Sam? The autumn leaves drift by my way. See your lips, the summer kisses, the summer hands I used to hold since you Wow, I mean, yeah, I can see he, he's really good. Yeah, and in the background is my other son. All the harmonizing, and actually the whole production was done by my youngest son. He's 22, and that's what he's going to be into. He's going to be into music production. Okay. And, and I wanted to show you that because even the art here, look at this. John, my, my son John, that's his picture. If you look closely, you'll see autumn leaves in his head <laughs> in the background. <laughs> that's his wife. And so, you know, we believe in excellence. We, yeah. you know, he is a, he's world-class. Uh, he is now, uh, he's only 30 years old. So in the opera field, they're very traditional. So when you're young, you're considered a baby. Uh, they consider a man opera singer in their prime would be like 40, 45 years old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the big time is when you're older. And yet John is now entering into the highest level. He is starting to go to those houses that are the top already at 30 years old. He is tremendous. And he is a fabulous teacher. So if any of you have, a, you know, a, one of your kids needs some lessons, you're not going to get any better than this. His teacher from Michigan State University was named Richard Fracker and he he was phenomenal and and John has really learned from him so that's that's just another aspect of of what you can get from the learning center online I, I love why you touched on the uh, uh, of, of the kiss and um, you know the the steps because I use those steps as a as a journalist the, uh, the you know there's not <laughs> There's not much journalism, unfortunately, anymore. Yeah, right. But I, 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 from my science and math background, those steps that you're talking about, and the steps of science and and, and building of of math as well, 
I use more in my daily life and I don't even know it, you know, because that's how I've, I, I've learned how to keep going and stepping. And, you know, there's so much weird, fake, crazy science, you know, everybody's a, a germ specialist now and, and everything else. But if, if they would just go through the simple steps and, and learn, there's a lot to be learned even during this, this pandemic and this thoughts okay. and, and everything else. And you can use it so much. Um, but yeah, like, uh, so I love it. What you're saying, Sam is I've got it. This is my whole philosophy of tutoring and teaching. Uh, those of you who know Bloom's taxonomy will recognize this. But the most important thing that people need to know, especially in high school, is this top part of the pyramid here. Okay, most teachers, because it's just too difficult to teach inquiry and to teach critical thinking. Mm -hmm. First of all, kids look at you like deer with headlights. Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm used to spit back. Can we just have memorization? And the kids that have a lousy memory sink. Yeah. All right. Yes, you need memorization, but I always tell my students, you need to memorize, memorize the Bible. Okay. There is so much stuff now. Why do you need to memorize it? Like, you know, chemistry. Why do you need to memorize the periodic table? Are you kidding me? Come on. Come on. I just yeah. go like this. Boom, boom. There's my periodic table. Any table I need is right here on my phone. I need to know how to use it. Yeah. I need to know how to apply it. I need to know how to apply it to the practical things that I'm dealing with. And you learn that at the top of this pyramid. And this is what I incorporate into all my classes. And that is, it's called, it, Bloom's calls it synthesis, analysis, and evaluation. I use simpler terms because people can understand better. I use the ability to adjust. You know, you're a shortstop on a baseball team. And you can drill and practice, and you need to. But you get in a game, and that ball takes a bad hop. And you're like, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't practice that. That's ridiculous. Okay, if you have a good coach, he's going to say, uh, hit the bench. You've got to adjust on the spot. And, and that's such an important thing with, your, with education. So many kids, <laughs> it's kind of comical to listen to kids comment. A lot of times they'll say, well, your, your tests, you know, they're worded funny. <laughs> you know? or, or they'll even be bold enough. You know, here's a 13, 14, 15 year old young person saying, you know what? Your tests are really bad. You just... And that's because they don't know how to adjust. I word it different than the way they learned it. And that's how life is. I mean, I was just talking to a parent last night. You can read all the books you want. It doesn't, it's not going to, how, how do I say it? It's a good thing to do. But when you come to parent, there is a massive amount of adjustment necessary. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't go by the book yeah. because things happen all the time. So that's, an, and then the KISS comes over here. KISS is an analytical tool. In other words, you got this big blob in front of you that's so intimidating, I can't handle it. And that's what most kids think of when they come to chemistry and physics. They're just like, ah, oh, what? I was doing, I just, my classes were easy till I got to chemistry. Mm -hmm. I teach them how to take this big piece and chop it into little pieces. That's called analysis. And the KISS method is one of the fantastic things I teach them to keep it simple and to keep in step. Learn how to go with what you know. They don't know how to do this. So as soon as they're challenged, no, not trying to offend anybody, but your kids will shut down and quit. Yep. They just stop. And I know this because I'm one of these teachers that I always put students on the spot. And students don't like that. A lot of times parents don't like it, but they don't understand what I'm doing. I'm teaching you real life. Yeah. All right, let's just take a test, for instance. You get to a test, you're nervous if you're ready, especially when you're challenged, like in chemistry and physics. And you've got to be able to adjust. You've got to be able to break things down to little pieces. And you've got to be able to go one little step at a time. The biggest thing we all do is we jump. We do it with the Lord. 
You know, he gives us this vision, you know, which might like Abraham. He gave Abraham a vision. You know, Abraham never saw it. He never saw his offspring like the sand on the seashore. He saw one son. <laughs> okay. So what do you do in the meantime? We've got to go one step at a time. But if you're always jumping to the sand on the seashore, you're going to have a problem. Yeah. And that, that, that happens in the classroom. There's another tool just like KISS that I use. I call it Ages. It is the best tool I've ever seen. And I, I indoctrinate my students with it. Ages means what is the question asking for? Or what problem are you actually trying to solve? That's like you want to go to, you want to, you know, I want to go visit Sam. Guess what? I need to know where he lives. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to get there if I don't know the destination. I need to ask where am I heading? Then what is given, A-G? What is given? What amounts are given? What are my starting point? How many times a student will look at a word problem and that's it. I'm done. Yeah. I, I can break it down and say, well, no, 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 no. Look in there. Don't even read the question. They, they really get surprised on that. <laughs> you get to the ACT and the SAT, you don't want to sit there and read all the stuff. Yeah. First of all, you'll be overwhelmed. Second of all, you don't have the time. So you need to focus in on what's most important, which is my last point in a minute. OK, so you say, I look at this problem and all I do is I look for two or three words. What's it asking for? Okay. Oh, there it is. It's asking for that. It's asking for density. Ah, got it. All right. Then that's then I got to find my starting point. Where do I start? Well, the problem is always going to give you information, usually in the form of amounts. Those amounts are your starting points. So you write those out and then you go to AGE, ages, AGE. You need an equation, a formula or a method that will fit the information you're given with the destination. And it's amazing. Kids pick this up and all of a sudden I had a student. This, this is a common story. Every year I get this. I had a, a student. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was taking chemistry. The boy could not pass a test. He had test anxiety. He did not know how to learn critically. And he averaged about a 55% on his test throughout the first couple months. I had two <laughs> two hour conversations with his father <laughs> and I was just sharing with him. This is how he needs to learn. This is what he needs to practice. And Long story short, by the end of the year, he was scoring 85% on his tests just because he learned. And the, the top aspect, if you look at the chart here, it says evaluation. It's called prioritizing. That is the number one thing, not just in science, but in life. You need priority. You know, the Lord told us very clearly, the greatest commandment is love. And wouldn't we change the world if that's what we live by? Oh, yeah. I've, I confess, I didn't live by it enough. I want to live by it now. You know, we put our doctrine, we put our theology first. Lord, no, no, no. He made it clear over and over and over. No, no, no. Love is first. Love doesn't mean you don't have strong conviction. Mm -hmm. He had the strongest conviction. So prioritizing, that is the most difficult thing for a student to learn because most of the students that I've taught, especially in the last six years, I was at a very good school. These are good kids. These are good students, hard, hardworking students. They couldn't think critically. So they will spend hours, hours. And then, then they get really frustrated after about a month or two of this because they're getting C's. And they're used to getting A's because they worked hard. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to hit that wall with my fist. Bam. Ow. Oh, that didn't work. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hit it harder this time. Bam. Oh. That's called insanity. Right? You do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. But I can give you the different result by when I teach the students how to prioritize. And in any kind of course, whether it's science or not, a good teacher is going to give you the top priority. They're called objectives. At least I call them objectives. Yeah. Other people call them big ideas. 
Okay, here they are. Here's seven objectives for this unit. That is where kids need to focus instead of they study every little detail. It'd be kind of like walking up to a tree and you start counting leaves. You're going to be there a long, long time and you still don't know what the tree is necessarily. <laughs> you got to step back and you say, oh, this is a maple tree. Look at that. The branches, they actually have opposite branches, kind of like we do, right? Left arm, right arm, they're opposite each other. You know, and, and then you can recognize the leaf form. It's, that's very different than starting to count leaves, which the hardworking student will do. Uh, I had a student, she's finishing up the year right now. Great kid, great student. But this was her problem. She did not know how to prioritize. And so I would give her methodologies, but she had her method. It took a long time because I had to wait. I had to wait till she was ready. And when she got frustrated enough, she was at the brink of quitting, right? Mm -hmm. oh, this teacher stinks. Mm -hmm. That's one way. Another way is I just can't do it. Well, the good news is we met and eventually I said, look, I won't give her name. I'll call her Susie. Susie, good student, fine young lady, but the Lord has brought you to a wall that your methods don't work. You need another way. And you need to learn how to prioritize differently than you have before. This changes you. <laughs> the students that come out of my classes that that gave their all and really followed, they don't struggle anymore. <laughs> nah. Other than the normal struggle. Oh. They know how to meet the challenges. I have I get emails all the time. Students that are in college. Oh, yeah. In fact, I just got one from a parent. Yeah, my daughter had you and she is now a doctor. And she still remembers your dumb songs. <laughs> and she still remembers all the things you taught her because you taught her how to think. Yeah. Well, and that's why I love, I mean, one, I, I love doing these live interviews and, and conversations because we get to know, you know, you and, and what you do so much more, you know, to, uh, of being able to see, because now I, I, I mean, what you're teaching, I mean, it does it, it, it uh, yeah, you're going to learn, you know, life science, you're going to learn this stuff. You're, you're going to learn this. And that's a part of, you know, what everybody wants to, to go, the a kid to go through, but these life lessons, I mean, it, you know, it, 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 you don't have to look far to see that in the workplace, we have issues yeah. with with a lot of people who have gone through even through college, not learning to learn, not right. learning how to prioritize, not learning how to analyze, and, and some of them are simple jobs. I mean, the, the uh, my my youngest and a, a friend of his both went into Starbucks, and uh, both worked, and one couldn't handle Starbucks. Because he didn't know how to prioritize. He didn't know how to do. I mean, he, he could do the, the steps. But when, like you said, when you're dealing with the public, the, you're going to be thrown oh, yeah. curveballs all the time. You're going to need to adjust a lot. <laughs> and he couldn't handle yeah, it. Because nobody, here's the hard part, Sam. And I'm not trying to criticize other teachers because I know how hard teaching is. Yeah. I, I've been there for 40 years. And you're, you're given, you've got to do curriculum, you've got to hand in lesson plans, you've got to, your, your behavior management for most schools is at least 50% of your job. Nothing yeah. to do with teaching. No. You're trying to keep, I, I don't want to say something mean. You're trying to keep your students in line. Yeah. Hmm. And, and I used to, there was days I felt like I was a lion tamer, no chair, no whip. <laughs> and, and I tell you, it's exhausting. So then... You're going to ask them to go above and say, listen, don't just teach the content. I mean, I was there. I was with many, many colleagues and I loved them. They were great people, but they basically would come out with, hey, I taught it. They just didn't get it. We all did that. Yeah. Sorry, that's not a teacher. A teacher finds a way to lead them step by step by step no matter what the situation is, but you can't do that in most schools. And, you know, to, like I talk about, to put a student on the spot, 
because to be honest, that's the only way they're really going to learn adjusting, analyzing, and prioritizing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're sitting back, relax, we can talk about it all day. It's, it's no different. Forgive me for saying this because I Bible study is awesome and it's important. But you know what? I think so many Bible studies, and I've been a lot of them, just sitting back. Yeah, let's talk about Hey, what do you want to talk about? Oh, yeah, we're, oh, that's right. Greatest commandment is love, 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 love. And then we go out and scream at our kid and wife. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no practical application and assimilation. So teachers have a really hard job yeah. because the best learning is through, I, I learned it as called inquiry-based learning. Okay, that means you don't, the the basic level is teachers don't answer the questions. That's the most basic. So, you know, you teach, student raises his hand, hey, I'm not sure how to do number three. Okay. What's number, see, watch this. What's number three asking for? Oh, oh, well, um, it it, it wants to know the the, uh, entropy. Oh, okay. Well, what are you given? You see, that's a totally different level of, of teaching now. Yeah. Instead of what, to be honest, what most teachers will do. Oh, number three. Yeah, that's entropy. And that's this and that's this. And here it is. And the kid, do you understand? What do you want him to say when you're asking yeah. him in front of the whole class? <laughs> sure, sure. And then he gets a 30 on his test. Yeah. Versus I put him on the spot in a good way. Yeah. I ask them the questions. I lead them to the answer. And a lot of times that means I literally have the answer right in front of them. <laughs> <You know? Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to embarrass them. No. I'm trying to teach them how to adjust, but you can't do that when you're in a simulated setting. You got to do the real thing. Yeah. And it's very difficult. So my classes are very, very lab oriented, very demonstration oriented, because then I can ask the questions. What did you see there? How was that? How did that affect you? How did that relate to this concept? And they have to answer. Yeah. And of course, I don't just sit there and, well, how about uh, how about you, Sam? What do you think about that? And Sam's stuck. Well, all right, I, I give wait time. That's another hard thing for teachers. But once the wait time comes, then I'm going to quickly come back with another leading question. And probably... I'll show you how to scaffold, right? You can't hit this. So then I'm going to bring it down here. Well, what about this? I will get what you can answer. Again, lead you step by step. It's a whole nother level. It's something that's just part of my person now. I mean, after 40 years, it's in me. (laughs) You know, when people come to me, they like coming to me for that. In fact, (laughs) you'll laugh. I'm actually starting to work at Ace Hardware. (laughs) (laughs) You know why? Because it's right down the street. My neighbors go there and I've rebuilt my whole house because I could. As a science teacher, I could figure it out. I know how to go to Google. I know how to research. I know how to, and you know, I've done gas work because of chemistry. I've done all kinds of physics stuff, electricity and all that. So I rebuilt my house. So now I'm going down to the store and I literally walked in the store three weeks ago and I said, look, I'm, I'm kind of semi-retired here. I'm going to be teaching a few kids on the side. But I've rebuilt my house, and I would love to just help my neighbors. <laughs> they literally looked at me and said, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There's a lot of trust there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but the good news is I am trustworthy. So <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I, I, I love, I mean, the, you know, just the, the philosophy. And, and now I can understand how, how you, but devotions as a part of this as well, too, yes. because it, I mean, you know, if you're learning already and you're teaching how to learn, I mean, what a better way to then add, you know, what, what's ultimately the most important thing is the Bible right into the mix of all of this which is unbelievable to find someone who 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 not only teaches the the courses and and what you teach but then you're teaching so many valuable learning lessons to continue to learn which is what i've pushed into my kids is always be learning just anything and everything you do always be learning because it's it's amazing what's out there the information people have if you're willing to learn this stuff you know and then to add the devotions onto it, it it's it's 
I, I'm just blown away. Like yeah, I, this all together. I have this whole section here and my courses are 32 week courses. They're, they're kind of set up like college 16 weeks, first semester, 16 weeks, second semester. And I have a devotion every week for those 32 weeks. You can see it on the screen here mm -hmm. and it'll be a Bible verse. And then a very quick explanation from my view, you know, maybe a minute, and then a contemporary Christian song or a song that I've written. And so all 32 weeks of the okay. course are laid out. And let me see here. I love the ones where my son sings too. Because <laughs> it's so nice, right? It's very yeah. personal. Oh, yeah. And it makes a difference to my students too, because they know, oh, this is his son. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to find uh, one of the beginning ones. This one here is my son, but I'm trying to look at another one here if I can find it real quick. I can give you a taste. I think this is it. Give you a taste of this. Therefore, even as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the provocation in the day of trial in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, 7 and 8. What is the basis of our choices? For example, Joshua choosing to serve the Lord. First, we need to hear the Lord speaking and obey him by his strength. Second, the wise man built his house on the proper foundation. Who was the wise man? He was the one who heard and obeyed the Lord's word by practicing that word. That's Matthew 7. And in John 10, the Lord said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. This is hearing the Lord's voice and following by obedience. So I wrote this song. I'll just play a little bit of it. All this time I've sought your face, but there's something blocking me from grace. I read and pray, even sacrifice, but entangling sins, refusing to obey. Too many snares I would not go. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We have an anointing within us, and it's real. So I think we battle, breaking strongholds, taking captive every thought, making them obedient. That's nice. a taste. That's nice. And also, there are articles that I put out here. Um, <clears throat> got uh, Voice of the Martyrs, I think, is a fantastic group. Yes. Um, and there's others I'll be adding, you know, Youth with a Mission and many. They're, they're just phenomenal. But I've done some biographical sketches of, of saints throughout church history. Just a brief thing that it just helps you to understand a lot of our history all the way to see 1500s, but th this is alphabetical. So many. And then there's even some spiritual articles. I picked out some of my favorites. Uh, Andrew Murray, you can see he was the late 1800s, early uh, 1900s. He, he did some conferences that were, I feel, life-changing. And, and you can see some of the titles, Carnal Christians. That's most of us. Changing from carnal to spiritual. Seven blessings of knowing the spirit. Fruit of the spirit is love. There's love, right? Yeah. Self-life, the greatest hindrance to the spiritual life. Praying in the power of the spirit, being filled with the spirit. Treasure and earthen vessels. T. Austin Sparks is another one that really had some great ideas on how to follow Christ, how we are a new creation, how when we become to Christ, everything starts over. I don't, you know, that's hard because we don't start over usually. Yeah. We kind of keep going, but no, when Christ everything's new. We know the verse, but we don't live it, you know? And then I have my own series that I'm beginning. Uh, I have lots of them, but I have, I've only posted three so far. One is forgiving oneself. Uh, be very honest. I never really forgave myself till three years ago. Hmm. It makes a difference in knowing right. Christ. Patterns of the flock. What kind of leadership should we have? What What are the qualifications? Of course, 2 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 3 is the text. 
And then I'm going to be adding articles there. So there's a lot, even in the devotional part. All right. The, uh, well, I, I know, you know, a lot of uh, homeschoolers and I know there's so many new uh, homeschool uh, families are out there. You know, I think they're the biggest um, worry that they have is math and science um, when it comes to how do I teach? How do I get my kids to, to learn these, you know, and and I, I uh, my wife had a, a really good uh, friend of hers that that was a, a teacher, and uh, it hurt the relationship there for a while. Once we started homeschooling, um, and because you know the, the the lady's thought was you're going to ruin your kids, and, and that's what she told my wife. Um, and, and it hurt the relationship uh, until about eight or nine years after that, uh, when she called and said. Um, you'll never believe what I'm doing. I, I, I am pulling my kids out of public school and I'm going to be homeschooling them. Um, you know, and, and, and when she came to that realization of what's being taught some of the public schools, what, you know, how they're, they're, they just can't. And like what you're saying, they're just, there, there's uh we can go down a whole tangent of, of what's going on and what's happening and, and why it's just not working. At, can I cut in? Let me cut yeah, in yeah. real quick, Sam, because I really appreciate what you're saying. And because one of my students this week said, you know, we need more science. And, and you know, I tend to get on my soapbox every now and then because I, I, I'm so passionate about it. I'm like, yeah. you know, the problem is not it. The problem is that science has been ruined. Yeah, I, I believe God created science. I really do. Mm -hmm. Man, like everything else, has destroyed it. You know, when we get into teaching evolution as fact, I mean, that is not even a theory in my book. There are right. so many ridiculous holes. I could sit here for hours as a biology major telling you, you can't explain this with that theory. Yeah. And it's really not good science. And of course, we know about abortion saying that that's not murder. Now it's even worse. There's no longer X and Y chromosomes. There's yeah. whatever else. And we could go on this list forever. Yeah. Science has been hijacked yes. by Satan and all the people he's influenced. So now it is, it is now bringing it back to what you're saying. It is so important to be able to teach real science. Because I think you've got a taste of what I've been sharing the first oh, half hour. Wow. It is so critical. Actually, it is, I'm talking about, I've been teaching you all science here. Yeah. <laughs> Learning is science. Yeah. The word science means knowledge. It is the center of learning. If you don't know science, I mean pure science, the way God intended it, you won't learn anything. Yeah. Science is that adjustment. Science is the analysis to break it down so you can go step by step. Science is knowing how to prioritize. What is number one? What is number two? What is number 15? And, and that's the beauty of this. So the way I've designed my company is maybe, maybe you can't take my class, but you could purchase it for a lot less mm -hmm. and you would have an excellent base of physical science, chemistry, and physics, where this, you know, oh, this is what I've got to cover. And the cool part is if you, if you use my courses, like I, I've got them laid out here, See, there's chemistry, physical science, and physics. Just, I'll just take one. Okay. And you, you see, I've got a nice video that shows you what, what's involved in all my cool demos and stuff. Um, the requirements but then here's the description. There's objectives. Eventually, the kids would come to, to a course site. Oops, guess I can't do that one. I can get out of there now. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got trapped. I'm going to have to reopen this now, aren't I? Hang on a second here. Learning Center Online. See if I can get back. Yeah, there it is. Okay, there. I meant to get to this page. I went to the wrong page. But there's three separate courses. They're all laid out nicely week by week. Every week, it shows you exactly what assignments are incorporated in that week, what assessments, and everything eventually will be posted on this website. 
and I'm next year, I'm going to add biology. So there's going to be oh, wow. everything but earth science there. And you can take it as honors or regular. And it's really pretty amazing. So parents that are looking for getting out of the public school, there's, there's a lot of co-ops out there and it's great, you know, and a lot of teachers there, but I've noticed that many of them are, how do I say it? Lay people. Yeah. Now, I don't even like that word. Okay. Yeah. But I'm an expert. I have been trained in every way. I've been trained in pretty much all the sciences. I've even taught earth science for 10 years. Okay. <laughs> that was not, that's my least favorite, but it's still awesome when you get right down to it. There's so mm -hmm. much about God's creation. You learn from that. Um, but not just the content I've been taught how to teach, how to learn. And this is all incorporated in the things on my website. Now, the one question we have is age yeah. ranges. Is there, um, you know, like the youngest you go, or are you doing mostly high school age? Uh, physical science is geared for middle school. Okay. And so normally if, if you have an accelerated child, I've had sixth graders. Uh, this year I have, um, uh, yeah, I have a sixth grader and a seventh grader coming in uh, to the fall. For chemistry, usually, yeah, chemistry and physics are high school. I recommend, unless your child is like a savant, and, and there many are, and they're, they're not like me, okay? They're really, <laughs> they're really up there. But mo most of us, right, I would recommend you do uh, biology, chemistry, and physics in that order. There, there, there's a human maturity needed for chemistry and physics. Uh, there was a big, big push about 15 years ago. Physics first, physics first. And in my school, which was a you know pretty average school, not above average, just average. I told my boss, you don't want to do that. These kids will not be able to handle physics in the ninth grade. But because the whole country was pushing it for public schools, they went along with it. And two years later, we switched it all back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because there is a maturity. There's to be able to um, conceptualize. That's a maturity thing. It's not you're dumb. Yeah. It's my, my wife's a perfect example. She struggled in math. She was always behind in math. And all of a sudden in eighth grade, boom. Puberty done. She's like a different mind. She yeah. doubled up in her math. And by the time she graduated, she was in calculus and she became a computer engineer. <laughs> wow. Ton of math. You yeah. know, took all the logic. And so a lot of that's the same here. So I would recommend. But, you know, I have uh, I have a student. He's only in 10th grade and he's taking honors physics. So mm -hmm. I have those kids that are definitely ahead of the game. And then they're going to dual enroll. They're going to take college courses junior senior year which is very smart when you're yes. when you're accelerated just get out of the high school realm and, and, yeah. and get the real courses but you still need to be prepared and that's why i mean the mother gave me the nicest tribute she said oh, i wish i had it uh actually i do if i can find it but basically she said that every child needs you mr rising <laughs> she said the way you pour into your students and the way you help them learn is unparalleled so she wanted her fifth grader to take me. And then we realized together, she's not ready yet. Yeah. But I'm going to tutor her instead. I'm going to okay. give her a couple sessions, get her starting to think about, because here's this beautiful little fifth grade girl who is like, you know, the classic, perfect, wonderful little girl. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Not right. really perfect, but she just loves her parents. She idolizes them. And she's kind of like, what, what do I got to take a test for because <laughs> it's like I'm just used to following orders. Just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Yeah. Well, learnings, you got to learn it. You got to do it. So I'm going to plant some of those seeds in her mind. Okay. And, and so you have, so you have these courses and you can, you can do them, uh, basically what live or live. You can do it self paced, which means totally on your own. You can audit if you want, which would be also kind of live where you just, Part, you know, come when you want, but the stuff's all available to you. The kids that take my course, they get everything. They get all the demos, all the labs for that course. They get my study skills. But if you're not in my course, 
they're all here for sale. <laughs> okay? okay, like here's here's the science demonstration. I have hundreds of them. Uh, I have study skills. If you look, this will come up. I have five different uh, packages of teaching how to learn, how to study, and they're all available here. Study less and get better grades. <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. I teach you how to focus. I teach you how to concentrate. So that, And I also then teach you how to have confidence. Those are the two most important tools of learning, concentration and confidence. And then how to take notes, how to study for tests, how to take tests. There's so many strategies. Kids constantly change answers. And I yeah. tell them, don't change your answer. Always go with your gut unless you know you misread the question. And, you know, then I teach them some very particular methods. Like I mentioned, ages already. I teach them what's called the triangle method. That's when you're dealing with variables. How do you, kids hate manipulating variables? All right. Density is mass over volume. What's volume? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I show them a. it works every time. A very easy way takes the math away. And then another one's called the crisscross method. Same thing, teaching them how to manipulate variables without the math because they're intimidated by the math. Yeah. So lots going on there. And then uh, I think I already showed you the lab lab page. Yeah, the lab page. You know, and, and anybody that that uh, might have missed the the first part, you need to go back and 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 rewatch this. But I'll, I'll give you a little bit, you know, because uh, you know we're we're here with Craig with a learning center online, and he does have courses on 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 science and. And that's what we're kind of going through. But on top of everything else, he's actually teaching your kids how to learn. And you're going through that, but you're learning how to learn, which is huge. I think that's the biggest thing today, because the more that they can learn how to learn, they'll love to learn, which then equals I mean, whatever they do, wherever they go, however they they go, they can tackle it by utilizing this stuff. And that's that's why I, I I love you know the sciences anyway. But then what you've done is is brought all of your your teaching, all of your uh, history of of everything you've done, and, and boil it down to help homeschool parents, you know, have their their kids be taught. And they're going to learn. They're they're going to yeah. learn the sciences, but they're also going to learn how to learn. And they they bring in, you know, you bring in this whole thought of devotion at the same time. Yeah. And, and this is huge. I mean, th this is absolutely huge uh, to be able to do and be able to have, you know, uh, live lessons. Be able to, you know, ha have you communicate with the the, the 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 children as well too to learn how to learn. I mean, it, it's it's mind boggling because I I think that's the biggest thing that uh, public schools and even private schools um, just just don't have is that learning how to learn because they're going by the book and the yeah. books. The you know you you can too look much at, to cover. There's too much to cover. Too, too much to cover, and 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 the kids will be lost. And and we're we're seeing this people coming out of college, and they can't handle the workforce. They can't handle. They don't know. They have the book knowledge, but but just like anything in life, uh, curveballs and different things, and you know they they don't know how to process any of this stuff. And so so I love that you've been able to put this all together for the parents and for the kids. I mean, it, it, it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah. The kids like my class, even, even the ones that are overwhelmed and, and don't do that well because they're not used to this. Yeah. And they don't have the parental support even to, to keep going. I make it fun. You know, you, you, if you were here earlier, you heard my, my world-class opera singing son and my younger son put together a song. Well, they got it from me. I sing every week. <laughs> I mean, I, let me give you a small taste. Chemistry is hard for most kids. Listen to this. Chemitis is a real disease. It's contagious like the common sneeze. <laughs> Can't read or add my mind's gone blank. Skip me, teach. It must be something I drank. <laughs> Each time the teacher calls on me, 
my heart stops beating naturally. It seems no cure I'll ever see. These chemitis, I beg to let me be. He's going to call on me. <laughs> oh, no. I'm confused. What's he talking about? I don't know. Chemitis, let me be. <laughs> I love that. And all every class, I'm making up songs as I go because I music is just part of me. And yeah. I tell my students I have songs for content almost every week because the Lord teaches us this, and we, you know, we we take it for granted because we go to church and we sing hymns. You don't realize in Ephesians five and Colossians three, the Lord made it very clear. He said, "Teach or admonish one another," depending on the the book. Using songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Yeah. We learn, many of us learn the best through music. You um, go back to the slave days, they had the best gospel mm. songs. It carried them through. Yeah. So I sing and I put, even ages I talked about earlier, I use Cookie Monster, right? A is for ages. A is for asking what the question's asking for. G is what's given the information in store. E is equation to help us do things right. S is to solve it. And does it make sense? And I sing it week after week after week. I Kids will write me three years later and say, I still remember. It starts at the anode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, when I when I teach marketing, I, I go in and I I, I do, you know, I, I start the uh, the old McDonald's, uh, not old McDonald's, the McDonald's advertisement that's old, the uh, about the the Big Mac. I love and, it. You know, and and that hasn't been on TV because I'll start it. And everybody will finish it. And that hasn't been on TV for like 25, 29 years. I mean, but people still remember it, you know, But and, and it's just kind of inside their brain. And, and that's, you know, uh, music, music does that. that. That And that's why I warn my kids about what music they're listening to, because it stays with you, even if you don't know it. The uh, But I'll, I'll listen to things and and bam, it, it pops up. So I love that you use music as well, too. The I mean, that's, I mean, I, I've been impressed. And, and that's why I love doing these things, because then, you know, uh, not only, you know, myself, I, I get to have this knowledge and, and everything else, but but the parents and, and people coming in the Homeschool Connect Expo get to see a little bit more of, of what you are, who you are, and what you do, because I am thoroughly impressed. Um, of, of what you're doing and how you've blended all of this, you know, into, you know, to, to, to gather for the kids to, to learn. So let me share one more thing that's unique about learning center. And you can see here, I'm on the enrollment tab. I even have what I call a create a class. And this is special. You know, if you get a group of five students, I will most likely teach them. You say, look at, we're free. Here, these five students are here. We want to take physics. We want to take physical science. I'll, I'll accommodate. That's the beauty of when you're a small guy like me. Uh, and then another thing, I have these recitation classes. I'm doing it right now. It's impossible to schedule everybody. Yeah. You know, because I'm not a big place, so I can't offer 17 sections, right? I offer one. But this one can't, and this one can't, and this one can't. So all of them, then I said, okay, well, how about this? How about I give you a 15-minute-a-week session? So you come in loaded with your questions, 15 minutes, and I just fine-tune. And then what's funny is some of them overlap. So, okay, you two get a half hour. You come together. And that's the advantage of being small and being so personal and intimate. I do my best to accommodate everyone. Uh, Parent right now, she said, I can't I can't do your physical science class at the time. Can you do it later? So she's actually going out there recruiting for me. She gets five people. I said, you bet I will. Yeah. Bet I will. So for me, again, it's not the money. The money is on your side. The money shows a commitment. You know, when you pay $400 for something, you're going to be committed to it. Yeah. You know? I'm not really doing it for the money anymore because if I was, then I would want to get, you know, and I want to have 100 students again. Oh, I, want, yeah. I want 15 total. So, 
Okay. The uh, well, that's awesome. And, and as we we uh, uh, you know wind down this time together, I, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed this, and and I want to set up some more times where we can get together and kind of go through. I would love and really maybe lay down some some learning basics. You know, yeah. of, of just some things and and uh, uh, for some of the viewers and 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 because there's so many new homeschool uh, parents out there and. And people are, are still thinking about it. We're, we're getting a ton of traffic from people like, I, I don't know what to do. You know, yeah. I'm kind of stuck, you know, and, and and some of them, you know, they, they've they realized that, you know, their their kids were having problems in public school. And then they came home last year and some of the problems went away. And, <laughs> you know, and so, my, yeah, son, you know, my youngest son was bullied. It was yeah. rough. He yeah. survived it. But I tell you what, it does its damage. It does. It does. And it carries it forever. I mean, it really does. And it's hard to get past, you know, and, and, uh, I, I see that with, with, uh, you know, looking back on Facebook and some of the, the people, you know, back in high school and, and some of them, they, they just can't get rid of it. They just can't re get rid of the voices, you know, that, that bullied them, um, and, and, and everything. So, you know, as we wind down the, uh, um, you know, is there, um, is there anything else that you want to, to kind of present out to everybody before we, we say our goodbyes and, and get out there? Well, I would just say that, uh, you know, I have a unique product that I, you know, I'm looking for eager, motivated students. I, I don't want parents to force their kids to take my class. <laughs> I want the ones that they know their, their child wants to learn. And I guarantee you, I will. They will learn in my class, and they will learn so much more than the content. Uh, like you said, I I not only put in the content, I teach them how to go step by step in the content, but I teach them how to learn, and I bring in the Lord and the Scripture, and a lot of spiritual uh, value to it as well. So, personally, I know I'd want me as a teacher. Yeah. I know my kids, like I said, all three of my kids, they're all grown up now. They all were A students. It wasn't about the A, but they knew how to learn. So whatever situation they were in, they learned how to adjust. They learned how to analyze. They learned how to prioritize. And they're still doing that. My daughter was a chemical engineer and she got went back and got a double master's in kinesiology and, and uh, human, what is it called? Human health, basically. And, and my son is an opera singer, but now he's an opera Broadway crossover. He does marketing. He's, he's an amazing person. And, and my youngest is doing the same thing. He's finishing up his degree and he's already got money in the bank, which is saying something for a kid in college. Yeah. And, and he's, he's creating songs that are, he's, he and my son, uh, they've made a couple phenomenal songs because they're, they know how to learn. They know how to prioritize and adjust and go around the corners and follow the Lord's leading and things. Hmm. So I'm excited. I, you know, again, I'm looking for just a few parents that want to see their child really learn what it means to learn and be successful in any area they go. And, and if that's the case, I think you, you should check me out. Yes. Yes. And, and definitely, you know, everybody watching, you know, check out the STEM fair that going on all throughout May. Uh, and then, you know, uh, check out to the Learn learning center online exhibitor booth. Um, it it's learning CTR online. Um, and, and the links are down below, uh, check them out. And, and he's got some really cool, uh, you know, audio that, that that's inside the exhibitor booth and, and then links out to the website, go out to the website, really, see um if this is something for your your uh, uh kids or maybe a group of you guys uh can get together uh but uh you will not be able to to, to, to go wrong with this Th this is uh this is a really cool uh, you know system that uh, craig has uh has put together um and, and just awesome just I, I i'm i'm speechless you know that that doesn't happen too often I, i'm just speechless you know uh, of the conversation I, and uh, i i think we should get uh, to get together you know I'd and, love to, and maybe do some more uh, of of just just the baseline of just learning and, yeah. and techniques and yeah let's and do a little tutoring. Yeah, yeah we'll do a little tutoring to show what I do to teach yeah. kids how to learn. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Stay on the line. The, uh, and, and everybody, um, 
you know, thank you for watching and, and thank you for being a part of Homeschool Connect Expo. And uh, we will see you back soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.